What's going on guys? Brian with Buffalo Beer Reviews. We're back with a, a brew day. Officially, this is like my second brew that's going to be going into the Firmzilla. I've been really excited about it. Uh, and per my last video, per my last email, no, um, we had XPA on uh, 17. That was, I uh, had Galaxy and Cashmere and uh, I had the Galaxy Cashmere sort of grist bill already kind of mixed up and ready for uh, brew day. So I figured what better day than, you know, my day off this week to uh, get that brew going. Um, I'll read the uh, recipe for you guys real quick and then I will uh, I will put it in the, uh, the description. But it's... Uh, it's 152 degrees uh, mash for 60 minutes. And in that is going to be Pilsner uh, malt, six pounds, uh, white wheat malt, 1.8 pounds or pound and a half. Sorry, one pound, eight ounces. Golden Promise, a pound. Then three pounds of flaked oats, three pounds of flaked wheat, and 12 ounces of carapils. And my hop schedule is uh, half an ounce of cashmere for the hour. Um, and then two ounces of cashmere, two ounces of galaxy at 10 minutes. And then uh, a whirlpool at 170 degrees for 20 minutes. I'm sorry, 25 minutes. And I added two of cashmere and another two of galaxy. And then those also call for uh, two ounces each dry hopping at day three of 10 and at day seven of 10. So you end up using... Two, four, six, you end up using eight ounces of each. So you end up using like a pound of hops in this brew. And that really, I think, is what makes it really aromatic and really flavorful, especially with those Whirlpool additions. Um, and I use the White Labs London Ale. It's a 013 yeast. Um, the first set of uh, uh, numbers I had on my first batch was... Uh, an original gravity of 1.055 and a final gravity of 1.008. And that gave me about 6.17 ABV. And I will tell you, it was just all sorts of enjoyable. And um, that pillowy, soft, flaked presence uh, came across really nicely. And um, some of my friends at work that I've been giving my brews to since I started in April... Uh, it was an overwhelming, you know, like this is your best batch yet. So, uh, there's been people that want it again. I want it again. Um, I'm not super happy about this Amber Saison, winter Amber Saison recipe that I found and I did. Eh. So I'll be looking forward to having, you know, a reliable go-to on the kegerator for a little bit. So, um... I'm almost at 200 degrees, so I'm, I'm getting ready to start my boil soon. Um, and I have come across a different kind of dry hopping technique. I'm gonna uh, flip the camera around, I'm gonna show you. Okay, so I, I think when I, tran when I initially transfer the, the wort into the fermenter, um, I believe I'm going to have this valve closed. I think I made a mistake the first time I put a, a, a brew in there and I had the whole thing open. So what I think that does is that has, when I took the collection chamber off after three days to add my dry hops, I believe I got rid of some active yeast and my um, oat cream IPA was fell real short on its final gravity and its overall um, ABV. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the valve shut, let everything kind of do its magic up here, and then I'll just put my dry hops in there and then open it up. So it'll be the yeast and the wort and all of the dry hops will be intact for up to the first seven days instead of three days. I think that's a, a big, a big little uh, no-no that I did. That might be the only thing I can think of. Um, so I just got to get that sanitized while this is boiling and um, 
yeah, I'll, maybe I'll try to pick back up when it's going into the Firmzilla again. Yeah, I built this nice little, I wouldn't say nice, but I had some uh, leftover plywood and some leftover wood. I just built a little uh, shelf uh, table instead of, you know, keeping it on a cooler. It's just, it's raised up enough so I don't have to bend all the way over. It's up off the ground. It's a little bit better working conditions. And then I've got my CO2 tanks. So... So yeah, that's that's really about it for today. Um, the only thing in this recipe that I'm thinking about changing is um, I only have eight ounces of cashmere left. I bought a, a, I bought 16 ounces of it last time. I only have eight ounces total, so I'm gonna be that half an ounce shy for like the bittering charge. So I do have. I do have like some leftover Centennial that I've been thinking about maybe replacing that quarter ounce, that half ounce of cashmere with uh, Centennial. I don't know, uh, but I, I think that Centennial and Galaxy play well with each other. Um, I'm just gonna do a little bit of, I mean, it's a 9.9 .9 alpha acid. The cashmere wasn't far off from that. You know what I mean? I wanna say the cashmere was around eight but don't hold that to me. So, and the Galaxy's 15.1%. So I'm, I'm not going to use any Galaxy. So I think the Centennial is going to be my alternate for my bittering charge just for hop availability. But that's what we do, right? All right, I'll pick back up. All right, brew day is going uh, exceptionally smooth. Uh, we're coming up on 10 minutes left in the boil. And I have my two ounces of cashmere and two ounces of galaxy um i have found when i'm using uh the whirlpool um in a brew that it's easier if i put the hop sock into the the spider that way at the end of boil i can just take this entire thing out and not have a whole ton of like loose hop material uh, that needs to be cleaned and drained and stuff like that. So when I'm doing a Whirlpool, I like to do the hop sock. Um, just take the whole thing out, boom, put the um, uh, the Whirlpool in after it's uh, cooled down a little bit. And then it just go. It's It saves me a little bit of time. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to go get my wort chiller in there to get sanitized. And uh, yeah, we'll keep moving. Hey, guys. Uh, we are just about wrapping up. We are transferring into the fermenter. Uh, this little, uh, the top of the lid it's on is, is sanitized. The whole thing's sanitized just to get it up off the floor. Uh, once it's in the uh, conical, I'll get it up on its stand. Um, I've already been kind of rocking it back and forth to aerate it a little bit. Um, and I'll get it onto the stand and I will start to pitch the yeast and, um, yeah, get the top and stuff on and kind of see, I've got like a little bucket of, uh, of, uh, star sand or PBW and I've got the, the floater ball. This has all been sanitized. I'm going to redunk it into the bucket, uh, before I put it onto the fermenter. So, um, that was one of those little tips and tricks that I found I had just having a big bucket of a PBW ready to go uh, helps out a lot. I'm just uh, about ready to um, pick that conical up and put it on its stand. It's just about done. So um, I'll see if I haven't made a video on the Galaxy Cashmere, uh, Cashmere wallpaper. Uh, if I haven't done a review, I will get that on to the channel as soon as this is done fermenting and carbonating. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed a little look into my basement bar space. I know it's not, um, you know, the most intricate or elegant, but uh, this is it. This is all you need to do, really, to do homebrew and uh, enjoy yourself. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers. Hey, guys. Uh, we are back to kind of show you guys uh, what this cashmere wallpaper this cashmere galaxy ipa looks like uh, i just poured it into the glass um had a little bit of carbonation issues so i did pour off camera and i let it settle for a little bit but uh this is 
very reminiscent of the first batch that I made. Uh, it's got this really cloudy, um, soft yellow appearance, almost milky yellow in, uh, in appearance, pale. Um, it's a little on the aggressively carbonated side. Uh, I'll tell you why in a second. I think my kegerator got this thing really, really cold. And this is the last of its batch because I had some line disconnections and some beer going all over the place and all that other stuff. So it looks the part and it smells the part. Now you'll remember uh, I used a bittering charge of Centennial this time around. First batch I used a bittering charge of, of Cashmere. It was a little bit lower on the uh, alpha acids than the Centennial batch that I had. I believe my Centennial was from 2019. It wasn't the 2018 version, which neither here nor there, but my Centennial was 2019, but it does give off this really pungently danky sort of green greenery that was not there on the first batch. Yeah, and it almost kind of it almost overwhelms the, the subtleties of the cashmere, if you will. But as you drink it, it's it's the same sort of sensation. You get this um, pungently dank green and cutting citrus to that first introduction to the beer. And then those, the softness of the cashmere and the other, you know, hop stand qualities of the, of the galaxy kind of come out, uh, later on. Um, and it, and it's almost too bad because it was just a, 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 a brew day sort of decision to add the centennial. And I, I kind of wish that I hadn't. Let me grab my notebook here. So my original gravity for this beer was 1054. My final gravity was 1010, which was really, really close to my first batch. My first batch was 1055 and then 1008. Uh, the first batch gave me 6.17% ABV. This batch gave me 5.78% ABV. I don't really think that's that's too far off for somebody who's only really been doing this nine months. I don't, I think that's pretty good, uh, reproducible numbers. Um, like I said, I used, uh, 0.4 ounces of the Centennial for the bittering charge. And I used, uh, half an ounce of cashmere for the bittering charge, the first batch. Um, I'll tell you in all honesty, this is still an enjoyable homebrew to have, um, but that first batch was such an overwhelming hit with all of my friends and family. And this just did not reproduce that level of enjoyability. So I would say um, skip the Centennial, stick with the uh, Cashmere Bittering Charge. Um, I've already got my uh, box full of, of grist uh, to do it over again. And that's that. So since the last time I um, made the first half of this video, you know, we've had some some kind of misses on the uh, on the homebrew front. So I'm looking forward to getting some some nice brews in, some enjoyable brews, having my equipment up and running again properly, and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed a little look into. The finished product of cashmere wallpaper i really really enjoyed it um this will not be the last time i brew this beer i you know i know what i did well and i know what i didn't like and i'll go back to what worked well so i hope you guys uh enjoyed a little look at what the finished product is and uh you know if this sounds like your type of recipe or brew uh brew it up and let me know how you guys did or what you guys thought about it all right so i'll see you guys in the next one cheers